Hi, Tim Ard here. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to Along the Four Staffs Road and a little bit of Tim's tips. I'm, a, I'm in the office here and yesterday I picked up a new Steel 362C with the M-Tronic carburetor. Last week before last, I gave away the 362 that I had, which is getting a little time on it, but uh, I gave it away to a perfect score over in Alabama, so I had to uh, reorder in. I picked it up yesterday, and everything uh, on it is, is great. They've changed a couple things, though, and I know over the past few weeks, I've had some questions. You know, we're talking through about different saws and no adjustable carburetors and that kind of thing, and I, I, I had mixed uh, messages back from some different people, especially with the uh, one uh, one uh, city that that basically had two sixty ones adjustable and then also Mtronics, and then they said they had tried some other things too. One of the other uh, customers that I had, and so I was um, kind of talking through with them, asking them questions, and and more or less they had never seen the operator's manual for the saw. And, you know, I ask that question in training all the time, how many people have seen it, and uh, nobody, nobody has, you know. And, and when it comes to these, these newer Mtronics and Auto-Tunes, it's important to understand the uh, adjustment or calibration procedures. The one that I had, which was, I guess, a year and a half old, something like that, I don't think I had done any updates to the firmware or anything on it. And more or less, uh, what I had out of that first manual was to operate it for about 90 seconds at idle. And then uh, I was looking through the, the new manual here, and, um, and what I see is, is that for the Mtronic, um, the chainsaw adjusts itself automatically for optimum performance during operation. Calibration enables the saw to be adjusted faster for optimum performance. If the outside temperature is below 10 degrees centigrade or if the engine is cold, start the engine, disengage the chain brake. Warm up the engine by opening and closing the throttle for about a minute. Shut off the engine. Calibrate the chainsaw as follows. Set the master control lever to the delta position, which is a little triangle, used to be the choke position. Engage the chain brake. Start the engine without depressing the throttle trigger. The engine runs and the master control lever remains in position delta. Run the engine for at least 30 seconds, but no more than 60 seconds without depressing the throttle trigger. Disengage the chain brake. The calibration process is aborted if the throttle trigger is released before the saw is properly calibrated. It is then necessary to restart the calibration. If it then is necessary to restart the calibration process, keep the throttle trigger fully depressed. The chainsaw can be incorrectly calibrated if the throttle trigger is not kept fully depressed during calibration. This can damage the saw. Keep the throttle trigger fully depressed. Depress the throttle trigger for at least 30 seconds and hold it in that position. The engine accelerates and the chain rotates. Calibration of the saw takes place. Engine speed varies noticeably during calibration. If the engine stalls, make another attempt to calibrate the saw. If the engine stalls again, engage the chain brake and do not use the chainsaw and contact your steel servicing dealer. As soon as the engine speed drops noticeably, release the throttle trigger and the engine runs at idle speed. Your saw is calibrated and ready for operation. So, you know, that's a lot to think through for all of us who have, uh, you know, kind of just picked up the saw, warm it up a little bit, and, and go to work. Uh, but for these new systems, which I've, I've been very pleased with these uh, automatic carburetors or just, uh, uh, you know, chip-controlled carburetors, it seems to have a little more power and, and more or less, uh, you know, the off switch is, uh, is uh, just a momentary switch to shut the engine down. Don't have to worry about leaving the switch and flooding the saw and all this kind of stuff. And, and so far, they've, they've worked very, very well. But it's, uh, it's something that, that you have to understand those procedures. And many times the people that are on the handles of the saw are not the ones who get to see the operator's manual, are not the ones who get to see the operator's manual. Equipment is purchased that the operator sees that if there's any issues because a lot of times it's just a misunderstanding about how something works.
I will say this for operators out there is, is that I found this copy on the internet. You can just Google it and uh, Steel has most all of their operators manuals online and so you can be able to review it yourself if you're having trouble with the saw. But it's the operator's responsibility to take control of that situation. So, and then plus, it makes your day so much better when uh, you're you're able to uh, not have all the frustration of a, a chainsaw or trimmer or blower or something that doesn't work right. So it's uh, important that we think through it. The operator's manual is is something to uh, to believe in, and it can help you with a lot of things. So anyhow, just wanted to kind of pass that along to you. I hope that uh, you're having a good day out there. And please uh, check us out on our, our YouTube as well as a podcast series. And please subscribe. Stay abreast of our information that we put out. And hopefully you will uh, you'll have a little bit uh, better time in your chainsawing. So this is Tim Ard, Forced Applications, wishing you uh, good sawing.